Hello everyone, and today we're going to export this model here into the source engine using 3ds Max and Wallworm model tools. This is a fairly simple mesh that consists of a few objects. This model has two different materials applied to the various objects. One is for the main tank and another for the frame. If I open my material browser, I just have two bitmaps into the diffuse channel on a standard material. The first step to exporting is we want to choose a base object. This will basically be the master object for our wallworm export, and it will also determine where the origin point inside of the hammer prop will be. I'm going to use the big tank here, and the way we choose this is by going to our hierarchy mode and choosing effect pivot only. And wherever the pivot point for this element is determines where that origin point is inside of Hammer. So if we wanted the prop to rotate around, you know, this point here, we could go ahead and just align it right there. Now, if we were inside of Hammer and we were rotating this prop, it would rotate around the pivot point right there. It doesn't make a lot of sense for this prop, and I'm actually going to just center it to the world which will put the rotation point directly in the middle. Now we need to go to Wallworm, Wallworm Model Tools, and Wallworm Model Tools. This will open up the main Wallworm Model Tool floater. The first thing we want to do is click Pick Model, and then we'll choose that main object. Once this is done, we get a little Wallworm Model Tool helper that will give us the name that will be used when we export the model. We can choose the model name right here. I'll just call this tank and then once we click off it will update that here we'll need to choose our model folder paths here you can choose presets for wallworm model tools by opening up wallworm settings going to models and you can add presets here so if i close this and then choose props slash my export little plus and i choose model props my Export, click little plus again. I can close that out. Reopen Walmart Model Tools. And now this time when I click Pick Model, I can either choose the base object that we originally selected or just click on the helper. Then if I hit the up arrow or down arrow, I can choose this preset here. So now my prop will be exported to props slash my export with the name of tank. Up at the top, we can choose static prop if we want it to be a static prop. If we don't include this, it will be a prop dynamic. Under the surface properties, we can choose the surface property for the entire mesh. We're going to choose metal. And now we can click show and hide. This will show and hide the currently added objects inside of the prop. So I'll usually click hide and the rest of these objects need to be added to the prop to be exported. So we'll just select them all and then click Add Cell. This Add Cell means that we're adding the current selected meshes to the prop. Now if I click Hide and Show, I can see easily what props are going to be exported when I click this Export Model. If I need to remove an object, I can just select it and click Delete Cell. Now when I click Hide, this stays here. So that's an easy way to tell what is currently inside of the prop to be exported. I'll just add this back in and then show it. And now we can click export VTFs, and this will export the VTFs that we have applied to our textures along with the VMTs. You'll notice that my current material path for the VMT is models, props, my export, plant tank 01, and plant tank 02. The way we determine what the VMT files will be named for the prop is by the standard material that's applied to it. So this standard is named plant tank 01 and this standard is named plant tank 02. So if I just rename these to tank 01 and tank 02, when I hit export VTFs now, it's tank 01 and tank 02. We also have the option to have Wallworm automatically export our TGAs or PNGs, whatever the bitmaps are, to a VTF. You'll want to click this up arrow to set the path accordingly. But if you already have the texture made, you might have already created the VTF. Or if you want to use some other way to generate your VMT or VTF, 
you can do it that way. I usually uncheck these, which means I'll just end up creating the VMT files. If I browse to my CSGO directory, materials, you'll notice that there's no models folder here. So right now I'm only exporting the VMT files. When I click export selected textures, it will tell me that the materials have been exported. And now I have models, props, my export, and the two VMTs. When I open these up, we have base texture and it's pointing to the path that it's expecting the VTF to be at. Most of the time, I'll just export the VMTs from Walwer Model Tools and then I'll use the VMT editor program by Yanzel to actually create and convert my bitmaps to VTFs and author the VMT file. It's just much easier that way to apply shaders and other settings. Back in 3ds Max now, I just need to export the mesh. If I click export QC plus model, we'll get this dialog. If you have any errors, it'll show in red or yellow. You can just hit close. If I go to CSGO models, props, my export, here is my tank file. Now, if I open up the CSGO SDK, go to model viewer, file, load model, props, my export, and tank. It's currently showing up black, remember, because we don't have any VTFs, because we only have our VMT files. If we quickly switch to wireframe, this is the mesh that we have exported. Let me quickly export my VTF files. Now that I have converted my bitmaps to VTFs and I've updated my VMT files, I can just hit F5 and now I have my textures on the model. If you're trying to troubleshoot getting textures to appear, you can always go to the model tab and see what VMT files are loading or erroring out. Now, if we check physics model, this is what would normally turn on the view for the collision mesh. Our prop doesn't have a collision mesh right now. What we'll need to do is make one inside of 3ds Max. To create our own collision mesh, we have a few options inside of Wallworm to make our life a little bit easier. Of course, we can just create boxes and then select these boxes as a collision mesh. If we scroll down here to collision model and physics, we'll have an option of auto hull. If we click auto hull and then just scroll up to export QC plus model. And now if we hit F5, we'll have what's essentially a shrink wrapped collision mesh. This means that it's basically just taking the outer extents of the mesh and wrapped one hull around it, which means if this object is used inside of a gameplay area in Counter-Strike, players will not be able to shoot through these holes here. This is fine for things like pipes or stuff that will not have gameplay focused around them. To create our own collisions inside of 3ds Max, we're of course able to just make boxes and then manually use these, or we can choose launch hull helper and this will open up another floater with a ton of extended tools to help us create our own collision mesh. For instance, if I wanted just these bottom objects to contain one mesh, I can select them and hit wrap around objects and it will create one convex shape around those objects. I can also select my entire mesh and use edit poly or poly select and I can go into polygon mode select just this arm here and hit wrap selected faces. After it's done, we'll have a new hall object over in our list and it'll put it right on top of our object. If for some reason, say I want to wrap this tank here, I can hit wrap around objects and I'm left with a shape like this. This is not this is not at all what that object actually looked like. So I can just delete that from my list over here. And the max verts per hull, I believe the default here is 44. This essentially determines the level of detail that each hull will have. If I set this to 40 and then hit wrap around objects. Now when I look at the collision hull that it's made, it's a much more accurate representation of the object that I just wrapped. I can hide this one hull that it's already made, select the whole object again, 
And let's say I wanted to bunch these three objects together in a single hull. So I'll select them and hit wrap selected faces. And now I'll have three hulls here. If when you're wrapping an object and you hit wrap selected faces, you end up with a shape like this. This is because the object that you're performing the wrap on has all of the objects together. They've been attached. So the difference here between these two is this object has been collapsed into a single editable mesh where this one still consists of all these separate objects. So if I were to use edit poly and attach all of these, I would end up with this result. If for some reason you go to wrap an object with any of these functions and the collision hall is not accurate or on top of the object that you've created, you'll need to go to the utilities rollout, choose reset X form, and then hit reset selected. Now when you create the halls from the selection, it will accurately put the collision hall directly on top of the object. So now you can just spend some time creating collision halls for all of your objects. You'll want to skip creating collision halls on little things like these pipes down here. And some objects can share a hull, like these feet down here. I can just wrap those as a single object. This top piece in game will end up having a brush on top of it, so you can't shoot through it anyways. So this will also have one object. The tank, you can't shoot through that, so I'll wrap around that. And I'm just going to spend a little time getting all of my hulls created. All right, so I've spent some time creating the collision hull for my object. Right now, this is just the hull showing, and if I hit show, we can see that the mesh itself is pretty well fit on top. Now, if players are wanting to shoot through these support beams here, they're able to do so. Now, under the Walmart model tools, I'll just click hide, so that hides my mesh, and all I have here is my collision hulls. Now, I'll select my collision hulls, scroll down, and click add CM cell. This means that I'm going to add the selected meshes to my collision hull. I can click this little caret button here to update my hull count. This will tell me how many hulls the model will have when it's exported. If it's one, that means it's going to be shrink wrapped. If I export the model now and then refresh it, we notice that it's essentially the same thing. Nothing's, nothing's changed. But if I choose concave and hit the up arrow, we now have 15. In order to use concave collisions inside Source Engine, we have to apply smoothing groups to the collision halls so the engine knows what halls should be separate from the other halls. Wallworm has a function that will do this for us automatically, and it's called this Process CM button. If we click that, we'll notice that all of our halls now have a smoothing group applied to them. And if we click on them and we scroll down to the smoothing options, we can see that this one has a smoothing group of one, and this group has a smoothing group of one, four, six, and seven. This button will automatically assign unique smoothing to every object, so we don't have to worry about smoothing them manually. Now, when we click Export QC plus Model, and we hit F5, we now have a complex collision object, and we can now shoot through the corners of this object. We can go ahead and load Hammer now. Inside of Hammer, we can place a new entity and then just go to Prop Static, search for World Model, do My Export, and there is our tank. If we hit Apply, there we go. There is our custom prop that we've exported. And the origin point is in the center here. To reinforce what I mean by origin point, again, we can go into 3ds Max. I'll hide my collision hall show my model, and if I adjust the pivot to say over here, then hit export QC plus model. When I go back into hammer, we can see that the pivot has changed to be offset from the model. And if I rotate it, it's going to be rotating around that pivot point. Whereas before, it's going to export around the center of the prop. So that's how you can choose the origin point of your prop. The pivot of the first model that you choose is the only one that matters. The pivots for the rest of them can be anywhere you want. You can also uncheck use local origin as world origin and this will 
result in using the 000 coordinate of 3ds max instead so if you're having an issue getting your pivot right you can just center your prop in 3ds max and uncheck this and you'll be fine if you have any issues exporting your props if you export them and something isn't in the right spot a few things that i would recommend doing is either first reset your x form if that still does not work select your entire mesh clone it over and then collapse it into a single mesh some modifiers will cause an issue when you're exporting your model but it's very rare that you do have that problem every time i've had that issue collapsing down into an editable mesh and then exporting that editable mesh will fix that issue that's a wrap for this quick tutorial on exporting models from 3ds max into source engine using Walworm model tools thanks for watching if you're able to support me on patreon there's a link below don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.